Family cars are boring, but that wasn't always the case. And it's precisely for that reason, at least I theorize, that we're starting to see things revert back to that thought process. But if you're a big car company, say Kia, you don't want to be boring, you don't want to be left behind, so you have to make some changes. So change, what exactly does that mean and is it a good thing or a bad thing? Well, depending on whether you're a political party, a business or an individual, it could be a little bit of both. In this, it's mainly good. If you look at this thing, you can see the biggest change and that is the schnoz. What they have done here is grafted on the new corporate look and really what that means is totally different light signature, totally different grille, it's a little bit more vertical. The thing has more presence, at least in my eyes. Now the car you and I are looking at is not the basic one. This is what's called the X-Pro. Uh, translated into English, it's the we want it to be a Subaru Outback because people pay more for Subaru Outbacks. So it's got all the cladding, changes the height of the vehicle, changes some other bits we will cover later. Then there's the propulsion system. Uh, here there are two on offer. There is a 2.5 four cylinder, not particularly exciting. Then there's a 2.5 turbo, which this is, and it's not just in the sort of off-road Subaru model. Uh, this one, the 2.5 turbo, this we've seen in many other Genesis and Hyundai vehicles, and it's usually the performance option. Now this is still a family vehicle, so what we have to understand here uh, is efficiency. So even with the most basic one, which again, this isn't, Fuel economy ain't bad, actually. It's uh, 23, 31, 26 combined. This one with the turbo engine, it's about three points lower on each one of those. Okay, so now that we got all that out of the way, a favor, you know what I'm going to ask here. If you see value in these episodes, would greatly appreciate you doing all the YouTube things. Subscribe, notifications, like, but most importantly, Share these episodes with your friends on all your socials. The algorithm does not change until you interact with it. Welcome to the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Now that we have the pleasantries out of the way, this, um, it's not as heavy as everything you and I have been driving as of late. 4,250 pounds, or depending on express your weights and measures, 1,927 kilograms. Uh, with that, a crossover. Oh, <laughs> there is a delay there. Oh, but it wakes up. Oh, you definitely feel the turbo, but it is subdued. But in terms of the kind of people that drive these things, it will work just fine. That working in conjunction with everything else, it all kind of caches the checks. The only thing that kind of falls down in the overall driving experience, the steering for some reason on this, I don't know if it's this specific car or alternatively, it's the way they've tuned this specific like off-roady model, but the steering, there's so much missing here. It's not just that it's light, it's, it's not, precise it's not direct and even like a regular crossover the one that came before it was a little bit better than this okay so it may be trying to be less boring but you and i still have to talk about the boring stuff let's start with one of the biggest pieces of business of this thing and that is hauling crap around. And there it does a commendable job. Behind the third row, it's 12 cubic feet. Uh, behind the second row, it's up to 45 cubic feet. And then if you were to put the captain's chairs in this one down, it's up to 75 cubic feet. Then there's another really important piece of business and that would be the towing. This, if we're honest, is a front wheel drive based crossover, meaning it's really a tall Camry, or in this case, a K5 and towing probably not huge when you think about most of these vehicles they cap out at about 3500 pounds this one they tweak a couple of things only in the x-pro that brings it up to 4500 pounds now while we're talking about the x-pro that's where we get into i'm going to call this more soft roading so let's take a look at the ground clearance here in the most basic ones it's 6.9 inches in this one it goes up to 8.2 inches as a basis of reference, the most basic Range Rovers, it's kind of in that area. Then notice the wheels and tires. 
Uh, believe it or not, this is the most expensive one they make, but these are the smallest wheels on offer. There is very good logic to that. You want more sidewall if you're really going to do soft roading, off roading, whatever. So this has the 17s, but in reality, these things are on offer with 17s, 18s, and 20s. This is where I, a six footer, would sit, and there is more than enough room back here. Uh, in fact, I would say this is downright luxurious. Uh, the rest of the bits on the inside kind of work all in conjunction with each other. Like, there's a lot of texture going on here. Notice that we've got the lines here, we've got different texture here, different texture there. It's almost too much. Remember the CTS back in like 2014? that uh, it's kind of reminiscent of that. But I'm getting off on a tangent here. Let's get back into driving dynamics. Um, this is more about ride quality in a vehicle like this. And that is why I'm sitting in the back. I wanted to understand what it's like for the rear passengers when it comes to ride quality. Now, my good friend, Nathan Adlin, who you know, he is driving. He was just driving like a maniac before. And I didn't feel disturbed. That's the point of this vehicle. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the steering. I don't love the transmission, but the power delivery is great. And the ride quality, especially in the off-road model, because it has the smaller wheels, it's more supple. It is less impactful on the folks in the back of the vehicle. Now, as Nathan drops the hammer, um, yeah, this was not a paramount idea. But uh, I can tell you it's a three row. Uh, not the most comfortable three-row out there. Uh, the seat is very low on the floor. Basically, your knees are going to be in your teeth. Uh, but it'll work for children. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game, Mind the Options Game, with today's contestant. Something that is attempting to be not boring. Now, there is a boring version. There's a front-wheel drive that does not have a turbocharger and all this stuff on it. That one is $31,990. Not exactly the most expensive vehicle on the planet. Then there's this one here, the X-Pro. The X-Pro adds all the stuff we've experienced, and this only comes as all-wheel drive. This one, built in. You said you wanted not boring, and you're going to pay for it. $47,390. That sounds an awful lot like 50 grand to me, but wait, there's more. Allow me to interrupt myself from the future. You see, it's the day after we shot all that stuff at the Tumbleweed Ranch in Colorado. And as you can see, we've done some driving here at 9,000 feet just outside of Winter Park, Colorado. And I needed to uh, share a couple of things. Number one, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, wasn't that car on offer as ICE and then a hybrid and a plug-in hybrid? Yes, that is indeed correct. However, the X-Pro, this like fancy sort of off-road model that is only on offer as a turbocharged engine, then there's going to be another hybrid, this one 221 horsepower, and then there's going to be a plug-in hybrid that's still going to have 32 miles of US EPA rated range. Now you look at that and you say, that's definitely gray. However, the folks at Kia, including the product manager of the vehicle, he says, that's brown. Um, I don't know where he gets it. Maybe let me know in the comments if you agree. Uh, then the interior you've seen throughout this entire episode, it's a two-tone. That actually you pay extra for. It's like this new olive uh, two-tone where even the steering wheel has a two-tone on it. Gotta say, it's a very nice touch. And then the last point, very important point, uh, you guys don't know behind the scenes I'm driving this with Nathan from TFL. And what you don't know about him, he, um, let's just say he's a lead foot. And uh, we're driving up and down the hills, basically on our way to Vail here. And the fuel economy you'd think would be terrible, but believe it or not, we're doing like 26 MPG on average going at Nathan's speed. Then the only other thing we pay extra for is the destination and handling from the exotic port of call of West Point, Georgia, $1,375. As a point of reference, that's like $400 more than the destination handling on a $130,000 Mercedes-Benz S-Class that comes all the way over the ocean, Von Deutschland. Anyway, that brings us to the full retail price of this 
not boring. 49,260 dollars. So a little bit behind the scenes, there is a small group of folks inside of Kia that really, really, really want you to take their car off road. I don't know why, but they do. You and I both know very few people are going to do that. So be careful what you wish for, because you will get it. Welcome to the TFL torture test, starting with Log Ugh, Avenue. Uh, this is where the ground clearance of 8.2 inches comes into play. Oh, hey now, this actually sort of works. <laughs> and this is a baby buggy, uh, but we did it. I'm surprised. Maybe this is why we have this group of disavowed inside of Kia. Okay, so the team at TFL call this Holes Avenue, and this is perfect for like body on frame SUVs. I actually just gave up a Sequoia TRD off road that we took on here this weekend. I gotta tell you, this is actually working pretty well. And this is a combination of the ground clearance. Uh, those 17 inch wheels and tires. So we have a lot of sidewall there. And really the secret weapon is the extra torque from the turbo. That's what's really putting all of this together to make it work off road. Okay, so while we're at it, let's try Logs Avenue again, but this time let's go down. Now the question is, does this have a hill descent control? It does. So let's put that on. Let's let it do the work. Actually, it's, it's a little fast but it's doing a nice job. Okay, this is where it stopped. Now I'm gonna have to intervene and drive the car forward. Okay, so this isn't as uh, bulletproof as other off-road systems. So basically this is, it's a nice to have, but this is where we've hit the limits of off-road. Okay, so it definitely ain't boring, but God, is it expensive. Now, yes, it exceeded our expectations in that it has, can you say street cred out here? I don't, I don't think so. But in reality, it didn't embarrass itself. It's not really an off-roader. But that brings us to the wish list here. Um, it's crazy expensive. How about a cheaper turbo model? I'm not even asking for a cheaper off-road because the reality situation is no one's taking this thing off-road. Now, something we didn't spend a lot of time talking about, the cost of all the different flavors of these things, to get the cheapest all-wheel drive version, that's around 36 grand. How about making a cheaper turbo version? So we have all the torque that could be usable on the road, and then one can make the choice if they want to add on the all-wheel drive. But I'm just one man. This is the point of the episode. I turn around to you guys to opine in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV Onward, Motoman TV Onward, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Now, if you found this type of episode fascinating, would highly suggest you watch another episode we shot in this very same place, but with a much heavier, much more expensive and electric SUV. You can see that episode here. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später.